Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, we saw the logic behind the FISD integration in the part 1 video and this is the continuation for that where we are going to see the remaining aspects of the FISD integration. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and share it with your friends. Let's jump in. Now that we saw what are the different components in the pricing procedure and how these components are created as condition types and how the base value of this condition type is determined by using from and to in the pricing procedure. The next part is how are these values flowing from the sales module to the financial module. That means how are we going to capture these values in the accounting documents that gets generated at the time of billing document. So for that we have something called as an account key. So every condition type whatever we require or whichever condition type we want to be captured as a value in an accounting document for that condition type we are going to assign something called as an account key and this account key is in turn assigned to the GL account. So let us say that we want all these values to be there in the accounting document except for these which we have created as statistical ones. That means these are just for our reference purpose. We do not want these to be captured in the accounting document but the remaining ones, the actual conditions like MRP, discount, coupon discount, freight charges and tax. So all these values we wanted to be captured in the billing document. So for that we are going to assign an account key against all those condition types. For example for MRP I am going to keep it as ERL which is my actual sale value which is not the final sale value but the initial ones and for discount let us say I am having a condition or less or account key as RB0 and coupon discount I will keep it as K00. I am just giving some random account keys but there are different standard account keys which we will use but in our example I am just taking it same as a condition type. So for shipping or freight I will just take it as maybe FR1 and on the tax there is something called as JOI. So wherever we want the values to be captured in the accounting document against all those condition types we have given the account key. So this is the main functionality of account key. It is used to determine the GL account based on the condition type value. Now how are we going to assign GL account to the account key? So for that there is a transaction called as VKOA. Now in VKOA transaction we are going to map each and every account key with the corresponding GL account. But we are not going to use different account keys in different scenarios. For example, we are having another pricing procedure which is ZPP002 and in that maybe we are having only a subset of these condition types. So wherever we are having this MRP, I am going to use ERL. But what if in case of a retail sale I want one GL account to be picked up and in case of a B2B sale I want another GL account to be picked up but I do not want to use multiple account keys. I do not want to increase my effort by creating multiple account keys and multiple condition types. So what I am going to do is I will go and create only one condition type PR00 and I will use it across all the scenarios and I will have only one account key ERL across all the scenarios but depending upon few other parameters I am going to change what is the GL account that is getting picked. This is the transaction VKOA and this is how it is going to look. There are various tables or what we can also call as access sequences based on which the GL account is determined. In simple words these are the different combinations of parameters which will help us to determine what is the GL account. If you see here in everything there is one thing common which is the account key. So in addition to account key there are different parameters like for example in this one there is a material group and the customer group. If you take this one it is a sales organization and the customer or the material item category with the account group. So depending upon these combinations, so if, if I open this, see here there is charts of account and for every sales organization there is a different set of GL that is picked. In our case, if we have different sales organization for domestic and different sales organization for exports, then I will have two different items here but my condition, so account key is going to remain the same and the item category is going to remain the same. Just that I will create two different lines just by differing the sales organization and the GL account. So this will help us to reduce our effort in creating multiple account keys and multiple. So this will help us to reduce our effort to create multiple account keys and multiple condition types. So we can create only a simple set of condition types and account keys but we can have multiple GL accounts assigned depending upon various other parameters. So this is how we are going to assign GL accounts to the account key. So for each of these account keys I am going to assign different GL accounts and these GLs are going to be picked up whenever we are posting an accounting document while we are generating a billing document.
So now we have understood the condition types. What are account keys? How are we going to define the values for account keys? That means how are we going to map the GL accounts to the account keys in the transaction code VKOA? And now the one more important part of the pricing procedure is how are we going to determine the values of all these conditions? MRP is of course something that we are going to define from the material. There is an MRP maintained at the material level and whenever we are creating a sales order on any particular material, the value of MRP flows from the material. Now the discounts and other taxes or freights might change from material to material or might change from the scenario like B2B or B2C. Similarly, how we are having certain parameters to identify the GL account, we also need certain parameters to identify the values of each and these, each of these conditions. So for that, we have a transaction called as PK11. But in order to understand how we are going to define these and how we are going to create the parameters, let us have a look at the SAP system. So if I go to SPRO, under sales and distribution, basic functions, pricing, and here is where we are going to maintain the entire pricing procedure and the related configurations and FISD integration. So the first part is define condition types. We already saw what are condition types and this is where we are going to define the condition types. For example, if I take K007, which is the consumer discount and double click on this. And here we are going to define the code of this condition, the definition and the access sequence, which we have mentioned here. I'll go further and what is this access sequence? But in addition to that, we're also defining the basic nature of this condition type, whether it is a discount or whether it is a surcharge, whether it is a percentage based or whether it is value based, whether the value we have entered or the value that is fetched for this condition type should be negative or positive or can be both. Similarly, whether this condition is applicable only at the header level of the sales order or this condition can be entered at individual items also, whether you can manually maintain values for this one in the sales order or not, or whether it is read only in the sales order. So all these different types of parameters are maintained in this transaction code where we are defining the condition types. So once we are defining the condition types, we are also maintaining what is the access sequence. So before we define the condition types, we need to create what are the various access sequences. So we have something called as access sequence. So let us go and check optimize access sequence first. So we're going in the reverse order to understand the flow. So after you are defining the condition type and mapping an access sequence, see for example here you're having K007 and it is mapped with something called as K307 access sequence. Access sequence is nothing but it is a combination of different parameters which will help us to determine value of that condition. The same way of how we are using it in the GL determination in VKOA, we are having different combination of parameters based on which we are defining what is the GL account to be picked up in that particular scenario. So let us see what is this access sequence K307. So if I go to set access sequences and search for K307, K307, Select this one and click on accesses. So if you see here, there is only one combination of parameters which is defined for this one. So if I open this and go here, these are all the different fields which will help us to determine the value of that particular condition. So one is sales organization, distribution channel, sold to party, release status and processing status. So now if I want to derive the value of the condition type K007, which is a consumer discount, it is difficult to go to the sales order manually and enter values for each and every condition type. So for that reason, we are going to maintain something called as condition records, which will help us to derive the values for these conditions depending upon various combinations, what we call as access sequences or the fields. So if we want to maintain the value of consumer discount condition, which is mapped to the access sequence K307, we are going to maintain the values based on these combinations. So where are we going to maintain the values? There is a transaction called as VK11. And VK11, if I give the condition type as K007 and hit enter, it is asking me these all parameters, whatever we saw earlier. One is the sales organization, the distribution channel, the customer group. And based on these combinations, it is asking me what is the amount for this condition. So whenever we are processing a sales order, the system will check what are all the different condition records that are maintained for this condition type K007. And if it, it will check whenever the value matches this combination, whatever we are maintaining here, 
the respective amount is picked up in the sales order automatically and that sales order value will be flowing from the sales order to the accounting document as we saw in the pricing procedure earlier now if i take another example where we are having more than one access sequences let us take freight and if i go to access see there are two combinations of how these values can be maintained for freight so if i first click the first one and go to fields the values can be maintained in the combinations of sales organization distribution channel division and inco terms and inco terms part 2 inco 1 and inco 2 whereas if i go to the second one and let us see what are all the fields here we are having division and only inco terms 1 so wherever inco terms 2 is not applicable we are going to use this access sequence which is 20 and wherever inco terms 2 is also applicable we are going to use the access as 20 so now let us see how the maintenance of condition records for this condition type looks and what is our freight condition our freight condition is kf00 so let us go here and in vkoil maintain kf00 see it is asking me two different key combinations one is inco terms part 1 plus 2 or inco terms which is only one so it is asking me under which key combination i want to maintain the value for this condition type depending upon my scenario i might select either of this and if i proceed further i will just enter all these values and ultimately i will enter what is the amount of the freight which is to be picked up in the sales order for this combination of parameters or key combinations so whatever the items that we're going to maintain here these are called as condition records so this is about how values of each and every condition are maintained in vk11 so this is the total setup now let us go back and check the remaining setup we saw what is access sequence how we can map the access sequences to the condition types how the condition types can be defined and after that after all these are determined we are going to define and create the pricing procedure so if i click on this there are various activities within this first one is creating the pricing procedure let me double click this let me take something which is applicable or which is similar to us let us try this yeah if you see here there are different combinations of conditions that we are maintaining here all these are the condition types that we are maintaining and this is the step which is nothing but the sequence or the serial number what we saw in our excel sheet and this is the account key which will help us to determine the value of that condition and here we are having something called as statistical statistical is used whenever that condition type is used only to record a value but not actually posted onto your financial document so in that case i am not going to assign any account key and i can mark it as statistical in fact if you mark any value as statistical then the value of that condition type will not have any impact on the calculations that are done in the pricing procedure it is just to record one value maybe you can use it in your copa characteristics but it does not have any impact on the total value that is captured in the sales order similarly you are having something called as required you can make it a mandatory condition we are having something as a manual that means this condition can be entered only manually and it is not automatically picked up in the sales order whenever you are creating based on a pricing procedure so these are the different parameters that you are going to maintain in a pricing procedure so once you maintain the pricing procedure now you need to determine this pricing procedure now that we have the pricing procedure ready let us assume we have two different pricing procedures one for domestic and one for exports now based on some parameter we are going to define or we are going to use a different pricing procedure in different scenarios for example if the customer is a domestic customer there is something called as customer account group or customer category if the customer category is marked as domestic then i need to pick up the domestic pricing procedure and if it is exports then i need to prepare or i need to select the exports pricing procedure so for that we are having called something called as a set customer pricing procedures so if the customer pricing procedure this is maintained in your business partner if the customer pricing procedure is either of this accordingly i will determine some pricing procedure so for that first i'm going to create different customer pricing procedures and for example i might create something called as d1 or t1 which is domestic and i'll create t2 which is exports save it now i'll also define something called as a document pricing procedure for example if i want to 
differentiate my pricing procedure based on the billing document type then that also I'm going to maintain it so I can again create the same way as how I have created earlier and now assign document pricing procedure to order types so whatever document pricing that we have created in this step that we are going to assign to the billing order types or the, the sales order types or the billing document types see for example this is a sales order type acon or this is ad1 so depending upon the requirement we are going to create different sales order types and for that we are going to assign the document pricing procedure so whenever the system reads this document pricing procedure it is going to pick up this sales order type or whenever the sales order type is picked up the corresponding document procedure is picked up similarly we are going to assign this document pricing procedure to the billing types also now once this entire assignment is done we are going to select this set pricing procedure determination so for this entire combination of all these parameters we are going to determine the pricing procedure for example our sales organization this is the distribution channel division and here we are having document pricing procedure and the customer pricing procedure so in our case i might maintain values like my sales organization is ts d1 and distribution channel is t1 and division is t1 and my document classification is maybe blank customer classification i have maintained it as t1 so i'll determine some domestic pricing procedure i'm just writing it we did not create this one but i'm just maintaining some random value here now assume that we're having a same sales organization but if my customer classification is exports which is t2 then I need to pick the export pricing procedure. So I'm going to maintain TS D1 as my sales organization. T1 is the distribution channel, again division. And here I'm going to maintain T2. And here I'm going to maintain an export pricing procedure. So like this, we are going to define the conditions based on which what pricing procedure should be picked up in which case. This is the logical flow behind the FISD integration. How we are going to define the pricing procedure and how the entire linkage between the condition types, access sequences, condition records, key combinations and the GL mapping, everything works and how we are going to ultimately get the values and the GLs in the sales order to the accounting document. Hope you have liked this video. I'll come up with further such videos. If you have any questions, please do drop it in the comment section and I will try to respond at the earliest. See you in the next video and until then, take care.